Hi, I'm Vital Bensek. I'm a statistician. I work on applied research in health and in development economics. I'm a consulting director at the Development Innovation Lab at University of Chicago. And this is a short talk where I'll be showcasing Bagger, which is an R package for Bayesian meta-analysis, which uses Stan, the most popular Bayesian modeling platform. In this talk, I want to talk a little bit about motivation behind creating the package, show a few simple examples of how it's used, and along the way, highlight why meta-analysis and Bayesian inference make for a good combination. Before moving on, I want to give credit to my friend and co-author, Rachel Meager. She's an assistant professor at London School of Economics. In fact, the package was motivated by our shared interest in real-world applications of Bayesian methods, especially meta-analysis. As Bayesian statisticians know very well, all kinds of meta-analytic methods have already been implemented and implemented very well even 20 years ago, for example, in weedbacks. So I personally think that the market gap in terms of Bayesian tools for meta-analysis is less in building new capabilities and more in avoiding errors and increasing access. What I mean by this is that in we live in, in a world, I think, where meta-analysis is more and more used as a kind of a simple plug-and-play tool. And this means that there are more users who will have wrong interpretations of models, overconfidence in models, and generally we end up seeing all kinds of garbage in, garbage out problems. And because Bayesian models are more uh, technically sophisticated, this problem compounds when we move to Bayesian meta-analysis. So this package is built for a particular group of people with uh, particular goals in mind. Uh, people who understand the advantages of using Bayesian models, but they might not have technical skills. And they might not be statisticians. Um, they might be casual R users. The four goals, uh, therefore, are to implement all of the basic models, focus on making them accessible and allowing people to criticize models, help them avoid basing mistakes when they're likely to occur, and still keep this uh, framework flexible enough so that we can extend it to as many models as feasible. However, the goal is not to build a power tool for people who would already be able to build their models by hand, as it were. So moving on to an example, I will use a very simple one. Bagger also has uh, methods for working with uh, binary event data uh, or quantiles or zero inflated data, although some of those things are still work in progress. But I want to use a canonical Bayesian example from um, Donald Rubin's 1981 paper on SAT improvement in eight schools. And this is a nice way of highlighting how a meta-analysis model is also a form of Bayesian hierarchical model. So as is typical, we only have aggregate data. Each study measures uh, mean and a standard error, Y-I-S-E-I. -E um, and then at the upper level, though the true effects, tau, tau i's, may come from a common distribution. Um, how they relate to each other is regulated through a sigma parameter heterogeneity. So um, sigma equals zero, Bayesians will call, would call full pooling. That is the fixed effects case of uh, meta-analysis. Sigma equals infinity means no pooling. That's no meta-analysis, no borrowing of information across studies. And anything in between is uh, partial pooling or random effects. Our objective as Bayesian statisticians would be to derive posterior distributions for tau and sigma. Sometimes 
also for distri distributions for tau i's effects in individual studies, which means that we need, always need to specify a prior on sigma and tau. Before showing this in action, a quick recap for why we might choose to go Bayesian in this meta-analysis. There are some typical arguments for going Bayesian instead of frequentist. I won't cover those uh, here, but few specific ones for meta-analysis. First, um, incorporating prior beliefs, I think it is a unique strength for uh, meta-analysis because they are always conducted in data-rich environments. So for example, for a medical RCT, one can borrow uh, information from thousands of other meta-analyses to have a prior on how much heterogeneity across studies there might be in a, in, in a particular domain, for example, in an oncology trial. Secondly, um, Bayesian methods avoid problems with underestimating uh, variance across studies when there are a uh, few studies, especially. And while doing that, they also em emphasize uncertainty in parameters. So it's not that heterogeneity is often big or small, but it's it's also that very often in meta-analysis, it's very imprecisely determined. So uh, Bayesian models bring this uh, fact to the forefront. Um, in general, Bayesian models allow us to create predictive distributions, so the dis distributions that tell us what would happen in another study that wasn't observed uh, much more easily than other methods. And in general, they allow us to create uh, any kind of derived quantity um, um, and describe them probabilistically. So for example, what is the probability that out of every study in the meta-analysis, each of them had the true effect greater than X? Right, those are very relevant to real world uh, decision making. And lastly, they also allow for easy uh, uh, and formalized model comparison. For example, choice between fixed and random effects. The cost of this is, is of course, higher technical uh, uh, sophistication and we should be clear about this. And this is exactly what we're trying to solve here. Um, one last advantage which is not covered by the package in some sense is that Bayesian models are much more flexible in terms of meta-analysis models that we can specify. But then one would have to do this by hand. Okay, so now quickly onto an example, we load in the package, take a quick peek at data. You only need uh, R stand and bagger packages in R. No extra software is needed, but you do have to have R tools installed al alongside R. Um, this is the aggregate data in eight schools. If uh, our input data was one line per uh, pupil in, in, in each classroom, the model would be minimally different because we have to estimate the treatment effects and standard errors uh, jointly in this meta-analysis model. But the code that I'm going to present would look practically the same. And now this is the entire analysis in Bugger. So quickly, segment by segment, we fit some kind of a default model in the first couple of lines. That's, that's the meta-analysis random effects partial pooling model. Then typically a, an analyst will might consider some alternative modeling assumptions. So here I just made up some extra assumptions about the amount of heterogeneity in data using different priors and also some completely made up example on where the mean effect might be. Right. Um, once we have the models, we typically uh, plot them. That's also a one-liner. We use a very plain syntax everywhere, right? So we, we, we use generic functions like plot and print um, this is specification of uh, prior distributions, Bayesian prior distributions is done using plain text like Cauchy, normal, uniform, student T, etc. And then once we have a number of candidate models, we can compare them using um, specialized functions. Uh, this one is called bagger compare. We can plot or print those comparisons. 
we can also compare the model conclusions. So those predictive distributions I, men I mentioned um, a second ago, uh, those are also encoded through one line commands. And a very typical comparison that meta-analysts will decide to do is uh, to compare fixed versus random effects. So, so a one line comparison like this is is done here at the at the end. And uh, um, to formally choose between partial and full pooling, random effects and fixed effects, in other words, models we can also conduct leave one out cross validation, which I'll explain right at the end. So now let's take a peek at the results and what the outputs look like. This is the default output from uh, a fitted model. I didn't show the fitting process, but it only takes a second. And user would get uh, all kinds of automated prompts about the decisions made by the algorithm when necessary. And what we see here are group specific automate, uh, estimates at the bottom. Um, and then at the top, we have summary statistics. So where is the true effect? What is the amount of heterogeneity? What is the amount of pooling? A pooling statistic is a complement of I squared statistic that is known to anyone, probably in evidence synthesis. And alongside each statistic, we see not just the mean, but also the uh, how precise each of those estimates are. So as I mentioned, it is very typical in smaller meta-analysis to, to, for heterogeneity to be imprecisely estimated. And this is to some extent true here as well, if we look at the 95% interval for this default analysis. Um, here is an, one of the examples of plots that we have in Bugger. It could be a forest plot uh, just as well. This is just a slightly uh, different visual flair. Uh, here we can see that, uh, in fact, in this random effects model, all of the estimates are uh, pulled very strongly toward the hyper mean, which is at the bottom of this uh, plot. Um, if we have different candidate models, we can compare them uh, using um, all kinds of visual uh, styles as well. Um, this is this is just one of them, right? So. Uh, here you can see that in two liners, we once we have uh, several models, we can just name them and try to plot them alongside or pr print them alongside each other and see how they differ in the results. Another type of comparison is to um, compare the predictive distributions. Um, and here you can you can by the way see that all of the syntax for for the plots. Uh, is done using uh, ggplot. So there is a lot of interfacing between our package and quite standard um, R tools for uh, for working with data. And here we see that ac there are actually some practical differences to, um, to those made up uh, models. Right? More practical example of model selection, I think, um, um, or the most most uh, typical one is when we consider differences between fixed effects and random effects, or again, the full and partial pooling. So here is an example of how we can do this using a one-liner in the uh, package. It's a bagger compare function again. We just say what equals pooling. Um, and when I plot this, I can I can see the thing that I've uh, seen a um, couple of slides back that for this simple example, um, random effects look quite similar to the fixed effects uh, model, especially if we consider the bottom row here, the, the, the pooled estimate, right? And here as a gratis, we also have uh, plots of uh, what, what happens under no pooling model, so no no meta analysis. Okay, but the, it's it it also makes sense to test for this formally. So here are three lines where we build leave one out cross validation models, which are uh, metrics of uh, predictive performance. Um, they are uh, closely related to 
asymptotically to information criteria that uh, you might know from other uh, modeling tools and from outside of meta-analysis. In this case, I measure um, leave one out cross-validation for um, partial pooling model and full pooling model, and then I do a one-liner comparison, which tells me that there is indeed a slight preference for fixed effects model, which we just saw visually. This model has fewer parameters and fits uh, similarly to, to data. Right? There is, of course, much more. And all of it is written in pretty plain syntax. So the things that I could have been doing to examine my model here are common, such as treatment effect, group effects, draw effect draw, which is draw uh, from predictive distribution, uh, forest plots, other pooling and heterogeneity statistics using pooling or heterogeneity command, um, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the basic outline of the package. The package in its beta version is available on uh, GitHub. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>